The Russian space program began with the launch of the first satellite Sputnik on October 4th, 1957 to mark the 40th anniversary of the October Socialist Revolution in 1917. The next step was the first manned flight on April 12, 1961, when Russian cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin blasted into orbit and flew around the Earth. Construction of the Mir space station was another scientific and technological achievement. The first module of the space station was launched into orbit on February 20, 1986. Less than a month later, the first crew, Leonid Kizim and Vladimir Soryov, were making themselves at home. The designers of the space station had intended their creation to last from three to five years, but Mir's life happened to last almost four times longer. Mir made over 85.850 spins around Earth in the 15 years of its existence. Several international crews had worked on board Mir. On February 24, 1997, Mir had its first serious accident. A fire broke out when cosmonauts tried to change an air filter. The six cosmonauts on board at the time, from Russia, France and the United States, had to wear gas masks for a time. Several months later, a Progress cargo ship hit Mir during docking, puncturing one of its modules and damaging solar batteries. In September 97, a computer failure sent Mir spinning out of orientation from the sun, and it was a nervous 24 hours before Mission Control regained control. This series of failures signaled that the aging space station might not be safe enough to use any longer. On June 9, 1998, the last U.S. astronaut left Mir, ending U.S.-Russian cooperation on their orbiting outpost. The last crew left Mir, August 1999, after which the station's main computer was shut down and Mir went into hibernation while Russia's space authorities tried desperately to find money for a new manned flight. The hope for the Mir space station came from the U.S. Some investors pledged to pay 20 million U.S. dollars to continue the Mir program. A month later, a cargo spacecraft delivered fuel and supplies to restart the space laboratory. And shortly after, a two-man crew returned to the space station to adapt it for tasks ranging from industrial production and scientific experiments to space tourism and advertising in orbit. But all efforts to prolong Mir's life came to nothing. Equipment failures continued and promised private investment failed to materialize. On November 16, 2000, Russian space authorities finally decided to dump Mir in the Pacific Ocean. The Russian space agency head, Yuri Koptev, said that irreversible processes had started on board of the station. Almost all its modules were out of order. The replacement of the basic section would cost 300 to 350 million US dollars and take four years. The height of Mir's orbit was less than 250 kilometers and the station was falling one kilometer lower every day. According to Koptev, restoring Mir would cost more than building a new station. But these arguments were not convincing enough to many Russians who strongly opposed the sinking of Mir. One of them was former space station cosmonaut Vladimir Titov. But despite his protests, the sinking of Mir, once the symbol of Russia's space glory, was inevitable. It splashed into the Pacific on March 23, 2001, going out in a spectacular blaze of glory.